if you're Toronto and you don't trail in regulation and LeBron does not make a shot in overtime, you have to win and you don't. How, how does Cleveland frame this night as opposed to how Toronto has to try to frame it for, for however they do it? Oh, oh, Scott. Oh, <laughs> Scott, this game was on a tee for Toronto. I mean, not to mention that LeBron was, you know, look, he was tired. He mentioned that after getting the cramps on Sunday, he really wasn't able to do anything before this game, and, and, it su and he suffered for it. But Toronto has the rest. They had a really quality finish that series with the Wizards. I know they went to 2-2, but the way games 5 and 6 went, really was empowering for them. Uh, you know, they, were, they had the perfect amount of rest. You know, they weren't off for a week. They had a couple of extra days. Um, they're so good in this building. Scott, they're 30-1 and one here on this court when they're ahead going into the fourth quarter this season. 30-1. and one. Uh, And they were ahead here, and LeBron goes 3-15 of 15 down the stretch. Um, but I'll say this. Even if Fred Van Vliet had hit one of those threes, or one of the tip-ins from uh, Valanciunas goes in and the Raptors walk away with a one-point win here. This was far and away the best the Cavs had played all season. They got to their game tonight, and they discovered how to use Tristan Thompson. He wasn't a big part of this game plan coming in, which I know is hard to believe because he was so big on Sunday, mm -hmm. but they wanted to play small. But now they not, not only did they get back into their rhythm offensively, but they found a game plan that they're going to use going forward. This is the best the Cavs have been in the playoffs, and it's not just because they're up 1-0. This is not the kind of thing you can say at the podium, but it's the kind of thing that somebody could whisper to you or McManaman. H how much of a sense, um, Brian, is there that just from Cleveland, this is what happens when we play them? At the end of the day, when the Cavs are in this building, which is a great atmosphere for basketball, they have great fans, it's intimidating. The Cavs are not afraid. The Cavs are not afraid of the Raptors. They did not wake up today afraid of the Raptors. They were not afraid of the Raptors when they were down 14. They were not afraid when they were down five going into the fourth quarter. They were not afraid in the overtime when they were making a run at them. They do not fear the Raptors, and that is not where you want to be as a one seed playing on your home court, and you could see that tonight. Like I said, the Raptors may have, have well have escaped this game and got it, but the Cavs built confidence as the game went along, and if they get even a decent game from Kevin Love and even an average game for LeBron, they probably win this by 10 or 12, and that's what's going to make the Raptors afraid of the Cavs coming into game two.